everyone, welcome back to The Daily Dive. Today we're joined by Cognitivity Neurosciences, a technology company focused on using AI and machine learning to detect early onset Alzheimer's and other types of dementia. Hey Thomas, welcome to The Dive. Hi Cassandra, thanks for having me on. So as we do with all of our new issuers on the show, what's the two minute elevator pitch for Cognitivity? Yeah, well, we've um, developed a revolutionary way of assessing cognition. That is the way your brain works. The company's originally a spin-out from the University of Cambridge, and the technology was initially aimed at solving a massive problem in healthcare, that of being able to detect dementia, and in particular Alzheimer's, early enough to make a difference for patients. Now, currently, dementia is detected very late. And in fact, one in two people die without ever having formally diagnosed the disease. And this is a big problem because this is a massive cost to healthcare. If you diagnose early, you can do something about it. You can slow the progress of the disease and you can help sufferers to, to keep an active life for longer. By diagnosing late, this has a massive impact, not only on people's health, but also on the cost of care. And uh, recently the Alzheimer's Association issued a report saying that the potential savings to the US healthcare system of early diagnosis of dementia could be as high as $7.9 trillion. So there's a big reason why people should want to work this out. Now, the reason this happens, though, in this bad situation where it's not detected, is that the current tools for doing so are very, very crude. They're not sensitive. They are very time consuming. They can take half an hour of an expert's time to administer them. But they're also massively affected by things like language, uh, education level. And importantly, the more you do them, the better you get at them. So this learning effect really makes them very ineffective. So this needs to be solved by an effective tool, and that's what we've developed here at Cognitivity. Can you walk us through how the app detects Alzheimer's? Sure, absolutely. So we, we do it in quite a different way. I mean, historically, people have asked memory questions in order to try and diagnose this and work out if there are any cognitive issues. We don't do it that way at all. We use a new way of doing it, which we call rapid visual categorization. So we show somebody, uh, expose them to an image, and then we ask them to see interestingly, whether or not they saw an animal in the image. Now, there's a very important reason for this, and that is that the human brain reacts very strongly to what we call animacy, that's exposure to an animal stimulus. And this is very important, and this also happens very sort of culturally uniformly. If you're not from North America and you see a picture of a bear, you still know it's an animal, okay? So this is, this is very important. So we expose a subject to a very short duration image, and then just ask them simply whether or not they saw an animal. Now, these images vary in their complexity. So some of them are very simple. It's a large, obvious animal in the middle of the screen. Uh, and other times, it's much more complicated to see a small animal in a very busy background. Now, if you're impaired, you can't see that small animal. Your brain does not have the time to analyze and process the, the information in the image and to recognize the animal. So the test design itself is, is very, very effective at finding um, small changes in performance. But over and above that, use artificial intelligence to look for patterns in these responses. And this makes the test even more sensitive and able to detect the earliest signs of disease. Can you break down the revenue model for the app? Sure, sure. And so there's kind of two main uses for the app. Uh, one is clinical. So that's being used by doctors to diagnose and to monitor patients. Now in that situation, uh, that's very much a sort of a paper use test. And that's really how what works with uh, healthcare systems, particularly in places like the US where there are reimbursement codes for this sort of activity. Um, but uh, over and above that, we can also do this in sort of licensing. So we can do volume licensing to you know, large providers and, uh, of healthcare and so on. Um, but also we have the kind of slightly less clinical, the more healthcare monitoring one. And this is much more for use at home or for ongoing monitoring of people. And that can very much be a subscription or licensing uh, situation. So people can pay to have access to it for a period of time. And you really want to encourage regular use. So that, that works very well in these situations. So under this model, do you see insurance companies paying to use the app? Yes, ab absolutely we do. I mean, we think they're very, or should be very incentivized to do this. Um, you know, not only is, is early detection, as we mentioned early, massively save or reduce the cost of care of people if they are diagnosed early, they cost less to treat and therefore save the payers money. But also in terms of ongoing monitoring, I mean, if you're able to, as part of your normal healthcare monitoring, actually detect how well your brain is working in the same way that you would measure your weight or perhaps your heart rate or so on, this allows you to make changes to your lifestyle, which kind of optimize your cognitive health. And that's very empowering for people. And it allows them to adopt behaviors, which make them 
their brain work better basically and and this is also makes for much less risky uh lifestyle with regards to general health so thomas you recently announced being selected for an accelerator program could you give us some more color on this absolutely no we were delighted to be accepted onto this program and that's with the texas medical center which is the world's biggest medical site it's a medical city in houston um, and they have a very sort of prestigious program of which we were one of only seven companies to be selected to the, to the full program. And it's very much designed to give help and advice and support into commercializing. And this is for promising medical technology companies, commercializing in the US. So it's very practical, very hands-on, very designed to give us the connections and the expertise that we need to really get into what is the world's largest and most lucrative healthcare market. Can you walk us through how Alzheimer's and dementia are currently being tested? Absolutely. And like I mentioned before, you know, this is a, a big reason why the system is very poor at detecting people at the moment. I mean, the, the commonly used way of detecting this kind of cognitive signals, i.e. the first effects of, of, of these diseases on, uh, on people's brains is really generally a, a pen and paper test. This takes around half an hour to do, and it requires supervision by an expert. So already it's time consuming, and it's obviously very expensive because you're paying for this expert's time for doing it. And over and above that, you know, they're really not very sensitive and they're somewhat subjective. Um, but even over and above that, um, they're very heavily affected by, for example, the subject's language. So if you are taking a test in English, but English is not your first language, you won't perform as well, okay? But that's, regardless of your cognitive function, that's really just testing your language skills. And similarly, one of the biggest predictors of cognitive function ability in these tests is education level. And this is largely because people who have a higher level of education are more used to doing these kind of tests. It feels like a, a little exam when you do it. So it can be quite stressful for people who aren't used to this sort of thing. And, and then, you know, furthermore, this idea that it has a learning effect. So the more that people do these tests, the better they get at them. If you're trying to monitor somebody's progress through a treatment course or seeing how well they're responding to, to therapy or so on, then, then the idea that you get better with, at the test by doing it is, uh, makes it very difficult for it to give you a meaningful signal. So what we offer is, is a very much more usable tool. We are fast, we, we are um, very, very sensitive and able to tell between different between healthy and impaired patients very, very well and, and easy to use and actually kind of fun. It's definitely better than doing a, a pen and paper exam, that's for sure. What potential catalyst should investors be looking for in 2021? Yeah, well, we're very excited about 2021 because at the end of last year, really, you know, we had our first clinical deployments in the UK and the National Health Service. We completed a financing round and there's lots of, you know, very good things happened. Um, so we're very excited about 2021. And we think that the main areas that investors should look out for is really increased commercial traction. So that's both in the, in the area of clinical use, so being used by doctors um, increasingly more in the NHS and elsewhere. Um, we really expect that we would be able to enter into some quite significant partnerships uh, with the company, with large companies that enable us to reach a, a sort of a, a wider market. And, and very importantly, we think that we should be able to announce our FDA approval towards the end of the year. And that's really one of the big catalysts. So once we're able to enter the, the US market as a, as a clinically approved product, then that will be a really big catalyst for the company. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the show today, Thomas. Thank you, Cassandra. It's been a pleasure. And for our viewers at home, don't forget to like, click that subscribe bell below. We'll see you next time on The Dive to talk all things small caps.